Why are these cheap mini PCs becoming so popular? Are they even worth it? Today I'm going to put this specific plus minus $200 mini PC to the test. We'll be putting it through its paces in office as well as gaming related tasks along with power consumption and temperature tests. To top things off, I'll also be reading out noise levels. How well is it going to perform? What does it do especially well? And where are some of its obvious limitations? This is the Ace Magic AK1 Plus. At least that's the brand the AK1 Plus is known under over here in Europe, or more specifically in Germany. In terms of pricing, we're looking at about 200 US dollars, more or less, depending on when you check prices. Should you buy yourself such a mini PC, or should you steer clear of it? Let's first take a look what comes included with it. Besides the device itself, we are also getting a power adapter, a power supply basically, capable of providing up to 30 watts, an HDMI cable to connect to a monitor or TV, then there's a mounting bracket with different hole spacing, screws, and a quick start guide. The device itself at first glance appears to have been kept fairly sleek, although that impression quickly gets thrown out of the window once we turn this thing on with its integrated RGB lighting. The case here is completely out of plastic, but given the price point we are dealing with, it's still pretty solid quality. As far as size and dimensions are concerned, 130 by 130 millimeters and 55 slash 35 millimeters for the height. And here there's a little more to it. By that I mean that the device's bottom part actually acts as a storage expansion for 2.5 inch SATA drives that connects via USB-C internally. This storage expansion part is optional though, can therefore simply be taken off to make the whole device even a little more compact and slimmer. We are then looking at those 35mm in height. I'd also like to point out that they've gone for very clever hole spacing here, allowing you to make use of mini wall and VESA mounting holes and brackets. You could basically attach the AK1 Plus right behind monitors or TVs if you want it out of sight. What might not be everyone's cup of tea, the very eye-catchy RGB lighting. While its implementation is pretty neat, its main drawback is that it cannot be turned off. However, there still is a way, a fairly simple way, to get rid of the bling bling, to which we'll get a bit later into the video. So what are we actually dealing with at the core of the device? Barely in a surprise, we are looking at an Intel mobile platform. For the CPU, it's the Intel N95, which in fact is part of the more recent Alder Lake N lineup released in Q1 2023. We are talking of four cores and four threads, so definitely not a powerhouse, but neither should it be underestimated. For the GPU, we'll be working with Intel's integrated solution. Nonetheless, a screen resolution of 4K UHD at 60Hz is supported without any issues. This thing even manages two screens at once. Also on board, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, advertised to run at 2666MHz. But in reality, I saw it actually operates at 2400MHz of the box, single channel. In terms of storage, Ace Magic have equipped their device with respectable 512GB of SSD storage. Even though we have an M.2 drive in here, it's actually based on SATA 6 gigabit per second. More than enough, though. Pre-installed comes Windows 11 Pro. Other than with many competitors or with laptops out there, the manufacturer, after booting the device up for the very first time, allows us to choose from several languages for Windows. The setup process is quick and easy, even bloody beginners won't have any problems there. Kudos to the manufacturer at this point for not installing any bloatware here. Not a single piece of third-party software comes pre-installed. That's fantastic and a true rarity these days. A quick glance into the device manager goes to show that they've neatly installed all drivers required for this device, so every component in here should work flawlessly. Trust me, I've seen and experienced a lot. According to Windows, the OS was activated with a digital license. Out of curiosity, I did want to know what kind of key was used for the activation. Apparently, it's a volume Mach 1, so indeed legal, but can only be used once. As far as connectivity is concerned, on the one side we have the following. 
two USB 3.2 Gen 1, and a single classic USB 2.0. Right around the corner, we have our power input, another USB 2.0 port, two HDMI outputs, gigabit LAN, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Additionally, a Kensington lock. The device connects to both 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi, or can simply be hooked up via Ethernet cable. Maybe use it for your NAS systems and whatnot. Just an idea. A pity that we do not actually get any USB Type-C port to make use of. It sure would be time. As a matter of fact, I've spent quite a few hours already with the AK OnePlus, and certainly am surprised by the device's capabilities, even though there are minor to slightly more severe weaknesses. At full load under Cinebench R23 load, I managed to read out a CPU clock speed of a stable 2.6 GHz. The score isn't bad, but it's also not necessarily high. It's apparent we aren't dealing with a high performance device here today, so you could more so consider this to be a loyal office donkey. I mean, one could squeeze out a little more performance if we were to set the memory speed to its advertised 2666 MHz, even though 2400 MHz is pretty respectable too. Entering the BIOS and tinkering with any settings in there would be considered a little too advanced for many users buying this product, which is why I've intentionally not corrected the memory speed. Nonetheless, the Intel N95 that's at the core of today's device and the multi-core test performs even better than many if not most laptops out there costing $300 or $400 or more. The single core performance is a bit of a letdown though. It is okay however. $600 to $800 laptops or even more expensive mini PCs for that matter would get us noticeably higher raw performance. For office workloads that's plenty though, I really can't complain. Slightly more demanding applications and use cases such as Adobe Photoshop and video editing software altogether push the Intel N95 to its very limits unfortunately. Things don't run very smoothly and stable anymore, but if you can handle a few compromises, it's still a somewhat usable experience. If you decide to use this device for browser games or even older PC games of past decades, maybe even retro gaming via emulation, this thing does well, you won't be disappointed. Nonetheless, it must be pointed out that you shouldn't fire up to demanding titles. Still, 30 to 40 FPS should be doable at low graphics settings overall. At the end of the day, it comes down to the graphics of said games. Farming Simulator 22, for instance, barely even runs at greatly reduced resolutions and the utmost minimum in terms of graphics. And I'm putting that mildly. I certainly would not be speaking of delicious eye candy there. But web surfing and even watching 4K videos does not pose any problems, no lags whatsoever. While the device doesn't run fanless, even under high loads, it's barely audible. As far as I've seen, the fan kicks in exactly once the CPU temperature reaches 65 degrees Celsius. Alright, let's get down to my testing now, as far as the power consumption, temperatures and the noise levels are concerned in different usage scenarios. The power draw is exceptionally low. At max, under fairly unrealistic circumstances, we're looking at 25 watts. That is efficient. I'm positively surprised by the temperatures. At idle or even while watching videos or movies, we're staying below the 70 degree mark, so the fan doesn't even kick in yet. At higher loads, we're then catapulting ourselves into the 80s in terms of temperatures, but can maintain that without the CPU thermal throttling. The noise levels are totally fine throughout all these tests. At 40 to 42 decibels at max, one surely cannot complain. Although there'd be one thing worth criticizing, and that is that the device, when plugged into the wall outlet but not powered on, emits an annoying high frequency noise. Once we pull the plug from the wall, the noise coming from the mini PC instantly goes away. Now I did mention to you that there is a way to get rid of the RGB lighting or basically disable it in a peaceful way. For that we need to work ourselves to the device's internals. That also applies to when we wish to upgrade the M.2 SSD or the RAM in there. So first things first, we remove the bottom 2.5 inch storage expansion module. Following that we take off those 4 rubber feet found on the next layer. Then we just unscrew those screws. Now we have access to the M.2 SSD. By loosening two more screws, 
we could take the entire board out to reveal the RAM setting on the other side. Now since according to my knowledge there is no off button for the lighting, we could just unplug the dedicated cable leading to the LEDs and call it a day. Not a super elegant way of handling it, but certainly effective. Conclusion To sum things up, I can say that the Ace Magic AK1 Plus is far from perfect, but for the most part, especially given the price range of roughly $200, does offer us a pretty good experience. For standard office tasks or home office use, this device should do perfectly well. Even for home theater systems, there's no need for concern. The only aspect I'm hesitant about is gaming. It's probably best to skip that entirely or just go with lightweight and or older game titles. The build quality is okay, the power consumption, the cooling and noise levels more than okay, and the fact Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed is pretty cool as well. What I especially appreciate is the option to expand our storage by making use of that 2.5 inch drive module. So as far as I am concerned, this mini PC is definitely worth recommending. That is, if you find the right use case for a device of this type, and if you can look past the flaws mentioned. With that being said, thank you so much for watching everyone, and until the next one.